today I'm going to talk about Excalibur. Uh, basically what the sword was, is what it represents, where it came from, etc, etc. Like I don't really talk a whole lot about my time when I was Merlin. Um, I don't know, there's a lot of associated baggage with it. So, like I mention it sometimes and I'll, you know, I'll talk about certain things and, but as far as the quote unquote lore, um, I don't talk a whole lot about it. Uh, as far as the lore is concerned, a lot of it is true, just not the way it was explained. But there's a lot of it that did kind of happen that way. But a lot of it that didn't. One of the things that was true about that whole story was the sword Excalibur. Um, it's funny because the sword, you know, I've been talking for a very long time. Go back through my videos. I've talked about metallurgy, cosmic metallurgy, right? And how there are certain metals that are not from this plane of existence. They're not from this realm um, that have kind of crossed paths with this world. Um, Excalibur, Excalibur is one of those is, 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 is one of those alloys, is of that one of those alloys. It's a type of metal that does not come from this world. Um, it comes from the sky. So, in the story of, see, the dog agrees with me. He knows everything. Um, in the story, Excalibur is, is given to Arthur um, by the Lady of the Lake. And then you've also got the whole element of the sword and the stone. And traditionally, the Sword and the Stone and Excalibur were two different swords. And in fact, they were actually the same sword. Um, as the legend goes, the Sword and the Stone was placed in the stone by Merlin to basically announce the true king of Britain. To uh, basically bring everybody together under, you know, the rule, the true rule of, of, of the king. Um, and of course everybody tried to pull it out, they couldn't, only this certain, this certain individual could pull it out, because they had the, they had the, they had the chops, I guess, right, <laughs> um, to pull it out of the stone. And then later, you have Merlin, who has this encounter with this entity, this woman, who's known as the Lady of the Lake. And she comes out of the water, and she gives Merlin this sword and a scabbard that basically are enchanted. They have an enchantment on them that allow the person who carries the sword to be basically uh, be uh, uh, unmatched in battle, you know, victorious. Um, and it was actually the scabbard that if you had the scabbard, the scabbard made you invincible as well. You wouldn't lose any blood if you had it. All right, so there are some discrepancies there, and I feel like I, I don't know, I was just like, it's just been like hitting me all day, all day, all day, like, there's something you should talk about, there's something you should talk about. Like I said, I don't normally talk about this stuff because whatever. I mean, you can ask me anything and about Loud Truck, about the whole Merlin thing, and I, I'll tell you as far as I know, like a lot of it is... Like there are things that I have for sure, and then there are other things that just, you know, are kind of just out there in the ether, and I get it from time to time. But, because there, there are certain things you just can't get away from, and certain things just kind of follow you through life. Anyway, back to Excalibur. Um, so, the discrepancy being that, like, again, the Sword and the Stone and Excalibur were the same sword, okay? Excalibur didn't come from a lake as you would think of it. Excalibur came from the sky. When they refer to the Lady of the Lake, they're referring to a woman that came from the waters above. Not the waters underneath, the waters above. That's what the lake is referring to. The Lady of the Lake descended from the sky. Make of that what you will. <laughs> um, it was she, she came from the sky and the sword was a gift. The sword came from the sky. And 
as far as my memory serves, it was embedded in stone. Um, and that's where it came from. The sword is sentient. It's always been sentient. It has a memory. It has a spirit. It has an, uh, an energy, a life, an aura. It has all of that. Um, it, has, it has a soul, you know? And... Like it, and it's like you you would ask like, what does it look like? And it's funny because it's like it has the sword. The sword Excalibur has landed on this within this plane, this this realm, this plane of existence, multiple times. Okay, um, things get really really weird down here, and the sword just kind of shows up, and there's like this weird turning point. Um, and this is kind of how it goes over and over and over again. It's a cyclical thing. When the sword shows up, when the sword's needed, it shows up. When it's no longer needed, it vanishes. And that's just how it is, right? But the sword itself is sentient, okay? And it changes from time to time. It changes like almost like a person, the same way I don't look like I used to. The sword doesn't look like it, it, it did at one time. It changes depending on the incarnation, or depending on the time period, depending on the cycle, okay? As far as I remember it, and this could be the current cycle of things, um, or it, it, the way it looks now, but the way I see it, the way it comes to me, is the, t the two defining things on it are on the hilt, on both ends, there are what look like, they're not dragons, there's something else. They're like these two creatures on both ends that have their mouths open, right? Um, and it's just a very ornate, very sleek, very alien design. It's, it does not look like something from this world, okay? And like I said, this sword has shown up. Multiple, maybe I'll draw it at some point and upload it. But this sword has shown up from time to time and time to time. It always shows up at these weird turning points, okay? This sword, the sword Excalibur, is made out of the same metal that Thor's hammer was made out of, okay? To give you a really quick, uh, give you the quick Cliff Notes version about Thor, Thor wasn't a god like you would imagine him. Thor was a guy. Thor was like a, I don't, I'm not gonna say normal, but Thor was, Thor was an individual who had communications with the heavens, and they sent him that hammer, okay? Thor's hammer and Excalibur are basically like cousins. I'm not going to say, you know, but it's they're, they're in the same ballpark, okay? And there have been other uh, weapons, there have been other items that have had the same kind of trajectory, you know, from the heavens to the earth, but again... I really want to stress this because nobody ever speaks about this. Because again, so many things are coded. So many things are, you know, it, 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 you have to read between the lines if you don't know what's really going on. But when they mention the Lady of the Lake, she comes from the waters above. It's not an actual lake they're talking about. Okay. Or maybe the people who wrote about it, they didn't know exactly what they were writing about. And that's just how it got translated. But that's where she came from, all right? In the lore, you know, you have this weird, like, um, this weird intermingling of two names, being the Lady of the Lake and Vivian Nimue. And those are actually two completely different women, um, entities, right? They're both connected to Merlin. One, again, the Lady of the Lake, honestly, sometimes she's called the Lady of the Lake, sometimes she's called the Lady of the Stars. It really depends. There are other people who have talked about this lady, but I'm not really ready to reveal who's been talking about her. You kind of, I mean, if you can find out, then you know or find out yourself or whatever. But I'm not going to like, you know, because those individuals are kind of doing their own thing. And I kind of want it all to kind of holistically coalesce. Um, but yeah, she's been mentioned throughout history too in other names and other, with other aliases. Again, not going to reveal those right now because it is what it is. Um, but Vivian Nimue was a witch. You know, she was a witch who basically, as legend kind of has it, she kind of seduced Merlin and 
she found out secrets about Merlin and she used those secrets to control and or imprison him in one particular incarnation. So that's who she is. But in a lot of ways in the legend, they kind of, you know, interconnect them together. So that's not really and two different women. <laughs> Just like, you know, they try to they, they try to like take Excalibur and the Sword and the Stone and uh, separate them when they're the same. Um, yeah, I just felt like that's something that needed to be shared and, and, and told. Um, people need to know that for some reason. I don't know why I feel the need now to say this, but, you know. But, yeah, the water's above, man. The water's above. It's a thing. There's water above us. The firmament, the celestial waters, etc., etc. Anyway, I ran it for about 10 minutes. Try to keep this one short. So take it easy. If you want to know anything, have any questions, I would love to talk about um, anything King Arthur related. I can tell you what I know, what I remember, and what comes to me. And uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> take it easy. And I will talk to you when I talk to you. Be safe. Be at peace.